Hi guys and welcome to Procreate's Reference Layer Plus Color Drop, a little video tutorial by Anna from Your Art Path. Um, so first I wanted to cover like a couple of things before we get started into actually using the reference layer, such as what is Procreate Reference Layer. And um, I think the Procreate Reference Layer is sort of like an advanced feature in Procreate that allows you to keep your line work intact um, while coloring it easily on a separate layer. And if we were to think like, what is it good for? Well, it's good for dropping colors on a separate layer without damaging the original line art. Um, it's good for easily changing the color of a particular shape and overall it just will allow you to speed up your coloring process and to set your color mood of the painting easily and quickly. And it, I think it's great for artists who create li clean line art and that want to color it while keeping the line art untouched. Also artists who want to speed up their coloring process and cartoonists, graphic novel artists or illustrators who like to use line art or just clean lines and stuff like that. There will be a couple of struggles you might experience with it, such as if your line art is not clean then um, the reference layer won't really work. Um, for example, if you create a beautiful clean line art but the shapes are not connected, then the reference layer won't really work, because it only works on places that have a solid outline. Also, if you use a textured brush, then it will work probably in a little bit of a funny way, uh, creating different textures where you don't need them, that you don't really have control over. However, if that is your style and you like creating textured work, then I think you will really enjoy it either way. So let's get started and actually look at how uh, we would start what, uh, with um, with the reference layer, like how do you get to it and how do you use it precisely. Um, so I did prepare a little artwork that I did a couple of days ago and it's a line work. It's not the cleanest or the best so we will run into some issues on it later but let's see how we would get started overall. And the first thing we need to do is to actually click on the layer and make it into a reference layer. But before we do that, I wanted to also tell you that once you make a reference layer, that the layers that are above or, be above or below it um, will be affected with the reference layer. So let's see what happens when that layer is not a reference layer, just a regular one. And when you create a new uh, layer and you decide to drop color into it, it's just going to color the entire layer. However, when it is a reference layer, we have a reference layer with a line work, and then we want to drop in color, then it just drops it in into a particular shape, a particular shape from your line art. So as we can see here, it dropped it into a piece of her hair as well as her shirt. The reason to that is that they are one shape of line art, so in a way they are not separate shapes, so in a way they are connected. That's why it did that, but there are ways to fix it and I'll show you how to fix them a little bit later. But that's pretty much what you do. You just select the color and you drag and drop and it will fill up the shape. The best part is it does not touch your line work. So your line work is safe, um, you didn't ruin it, and it's just really fast and easy way to color stuff and then change the colors later on if you wanted to. So as we can also see, it sometimes drops it in into parts that we don't want it to drop into, but we will also be fixing that later. But for now, let me just speed up quickly while I drop in some colors. All right, so as I get to the top part of her hair, I want to fill it in with a color. However, look closely at what happens. It also touches her face. The reason for that is if I take away the color, you will see that they are one shape. So the hair is not specifically defined to be separated from her face and we will fix that a little bit later. There are a couple ways of how we can do that. But before we get to the fixing, let me show you another way in which you can use the reference layer. 
You can also use the select tool and make sure you have it on automatic and then you can just click on a shape. And once it selects the shape, you can just color drop it within that shape or use a brush to fill it up. It's also really cool and I actually find myself that I'm using the selection, automatic selection way more than just the color color drop because I think it's more precise. However, it's not always more precise, so let's fix the face and the hair problem. Uh, how I like fi uh, fixing it is I would take the selection tool, I will click on freehand and then I will select the parts that I do not want inside that selection. So as you can see we have selected part of her hair and her face because it's the white color and the rest is gray so it lets us know it's selected and then I just select and quickly make some shape um, of what I do not want in selection and then I just click on um, take away to take it away from selection sorry I forgot what's the tool called anyway then when I drop in the color it just drops it in into the, the actual selection that I had and with that in mind, I will create. I'm using the layer below the reference layer. As I said before, you can use it above or below. And I'm just going to use that layer to fill in her skin color, only skin color, because sometimes I just wanna uh, focus on that, and it will make it way more easier for me to change the color, just like I will do here, because I actually do not like that skin color. So the easiest way to do that, it would be to have the skin color on one layer and then go to, to adjustments, hue and saturation, and then just play around until I see something that I like. So it's just a quick and easy way of doing that. And they're all in separate layers, so nothing is ruined, everything's great. And then you will notice also a little small parts that need to be filled out. Um, so we're just gonna go through that. Um, now I'm just gonna fill out her hair with a different color and while I do that we still have the same issue that we had before because when I select the top part it selects the face as well however we can also fix that we can fix it with the selection tool as we did before or we can just drop the color we want on the layer at the top and then use an eraser tool to erase the parts we do not want. And as you can see, the skin layer appears at the bottom because it's on a separate layer, so it makes it very easy. That is why I would suggest working on many layers for many colors, because in case you wanna change something, fix something, it's really easy. Also, in case you do not like a specific color you can adjust just that color so for the purpose of this tutorial I actually was just dropping it in into only two different layers but if I was doing this for a client I would definitely use way more color layers so I have um, I can adjust them way faster in case the client says well I don't like the color of her hair I want to change it and then it will be really easy for me if I have them all on separate layers way easier So now let me just quickly drop in all the remaining colors and in case you had a color on a part that you don't want you can just select it select that one with the automatic selection and erase it and that's really how easy that is to fix that little issue then we can do the same with the face and this the shirt And as you can see on some parts, I just go on a different, like go with the brush and change things with the brush, uh, which is also really, really easy to do. And for her lips, I could select them with the freehand selection if I wanted to, but instead I decided that I will be using just a soft brush and just fill it in with a soft brush i just find it easier especially for lips as they are pretty soft or i mean that's how i like to create them all right so that's how you pretty much fill it in and as it's all ready with the base colors i wanted to show you a different artwork that i did 
and that artwork is also a line art but it's very detailed and it's not very clean um, it looks good and if I wanted to color it I would use a different coloring way because if I click on reference and then I want to drop in color or select something you will see that it doesn't select what I want it to select because it has so many details it creates those white outlines uh, beside the details and that's really something we don't want um, if I just color drop it also creates those white outlines so I really didn't like that but if we color drop without the selection then it just covers the line art completely and I'll show you how to um, make sure that your line art is seen a little bit later but I really couldn't get the second horn to be filled out with color it was really hard and mostly because it's not a singular shape and it also has so many details it's just not the line work to use a reference layer on. Now let me show you what will happen if you use a texture brush. So I'm going to use a texture watercolor brush and I will just draw a flower like those you draw in kindergarten. <laughs> so as I draw the flower you can see that it has a lot of texture to it and if I make it a reference layer and I will decide that I want to color drop uh, something on it. It actually won't work because it's not one singular shape and well I mean it is but it's very transparent and things like that so we would have to use the automatic selection but as you can see it selects it kind of weirdly leaving those white marks and I can keep expanding it um, but then again the result is still very very textured so if I take away the line art you will be able to see all those little tiny textures something you might like something you might not so let me just quickly fill in all the petals and the middle all right so as it's all filled out if I take away the line art that's the look you're getting you can really play around with it and if that's the look you want it could look pretty good I mean for certain parts this could work um, but let me just quickly change the line art and see if it's gonna look good all together I'm gonna change the line art color perfect now as you can see that could totally work for like a children's book illustration um, or something like that so if that's your style then you might actually enjoy it but the lines won't be clean the coloring won't be clean as it would in a graphic novel or whatever okay now let me show you another way you can use um, the reference layer you can select the shape and then you can go ahead and use a textured brush and just paint away um, to create some cool textures because it will stay within that shape it actually won't leave the shape so you can play around with it as much as you want you can create big and bold brush strokes but it will stay within the same shape no problem and if we wanted to add some shadows or highlights we could use like a soft brush and paint just a little outside of that shape and then it will cr create a nice gradient effect because you're not actually painting on the shape you're painting a little bit outside so only parts of it are going to be touched and I actually enjoy the textures way more than just um, regular coloring but it is again up to you your personal preference and your style but that's just one of the ways you can use the reference layer and if we wanted to add line art on the top because it got lost we can copy the line art layer and put it on top of all the color layers now it's visible but it is a bright blue color which is not something I really like but if I make it into an alpha log then I can start changing the colors of your line art layer and just making it different colors red yellow blue green doesn't matter as long as it really livens up the figure and has a purpose to it so I really like doing that if I ever work with line art and I want the line art to be shown on the final piece I really love changing the colors and it's so easy to do um, I guess that doesn't really um, it's not really a part of the Procreate reference layer tutorial but just a quick tip um, for you to know 
All right, I hope you enjoyed the reference layer tutorial and I hope you understand it now and you're inspired to go and experiment with it. Um, if you like to quickly color stuff and you like using line art, then I think you will really um, benefit from that tool. Other than that, make sure to go to yourartpath.com and under the freebies menu, get my 20 Procreate tips every artist needs to know and a two free hairbrushes that I created that I wanted to share with you. I love using those hairbrushes, so if you are into painting realistic hair, um, I think you will really like them as well. All right, guys, see you next lesson.